Greetings everyone. Now, years and years ago, when I was first learning photography, one of my favorite YouTube videos about it was by Digital Rev TV, where they pitted a pro camera with a cheapo lens up against a cheap camera with a pro lens. And I loved it, it was funny and informative, helped me understand the importance of good glass. But that was 12 years ago now, and a huge amount has changed in camera technology. What about today? Imagine with me for one second, that your uncle is driving a minibus full of your elderly relatives and he falls asleep at the wheel and crashes into a fireworks factory. Tragedy! But you inherit loads of money as a result. Silver lining? But you have 17 brothers and sisters to share it all with and you end up with only three and a half thousand dollars to kickstart your photography hobby with. What combination are you going to go for? Well, here's your first option. You could get a cheaper camera here we have the EOS R50, it's brand new and it's the most affordable and small camera on the EOS R system and I've paired it up here with Canon's most expensive standard zoom lens, the 28-70mm f2. This is the brightest aperture standard zoom lens ever made and look at it, it's just a monster. Look at these two, it's like David and Goliath. Well, if those two team together anyway. I wonder how well that's going to work up against your other option, which is to buy a much more expensive camera, like my lovely Canon EOS R5, with its 45 megapixel full frame sensor and 8K video recording, teamed up with the cheapest zoom lens that I could possibly find on eBay. This thing cost 28 quid or 30 US dollars, and it's moments from death. It's a Tamron lens from 1995. 28 to 80 millimeter, a 3.5 to 5.6 zoom lens. I wonder how on earth this can do up against the cheaper camera with a pro lens. Let's take a look. Okay, so this isn't the most serious video I've ever made, but I couldn't resist putting it together at the same time I was testing that new EOS R50 camera and the ancient Tamron lens was calling out my name too. And I thought to myself, I already use a load of the same royalty free music as an homage to those old digital rev TV videos. I might as well steal some of their old ideas too. <laughs> when it comes to handling, well, this tiny camera with a giant lens is a little bit of a handful. The back buttons are so tiny and so titchy, it's actually given my thumbs a bit of an ache to, um, to press the buttons. And the front is so heavy that I dread to hold the camera as it is in case it just kind of snaps off really and I'm gonna get some funny looks holding this giant camera lens with a small camera and this is one area where actually I much prefer the more expensive camera my EOS R5 is much bigger so that's helpful for my big clumsy farmer's hands it feels much more I don't know just much more dexterous and the small little lens makes the whole system much lighter weight than the cheap camera and the pro lens so that's one nice little advantage I suppose of the more expensive camera well, one issue with the less expensive camera is that it has a smaller cropped sensor and that means you're not getting such wide angles. So this 28mm lens, so it doesn't really start with a wide angle at all. That's a bit of an issue for my landscape photography. So that's one advantage of the full frame camera. You can easily get wider angles and it's taken Canon a long time to make wide angle lenses for their APS-C sensor cameras. On that little EOS R50 at the moment, you'll have to adapt some older ultra wide angle lenses like Canon's own EFS 10 to 18 mm IS STM if you want truly wide angles. And who wants to use an adapter, right? When working with a full frame camera though, you have a bigger selection of wide angle optics to play with and the lens's focal lengths are true to their numbers. A 24mm lens really gives that 24mm angle and you don't have to multiply it by the smaller camera's crop factor of 1.6 times to figure out what sort of field of view you're really getting. Now when it comes to autofocus, both of these cameras are surprisingly easy to use and nice and quick. So the main difference comes in the lens and when I'm using the, uh, yeah, this lovely L lens, it's lovely and snappy, nice and quick and it's quiet and accurate. I've got nothing to worry about when autofocus with the Canon L lens and it's a little bit different with the old Tamron lens. Oh my goodness, this thing is slow, it's inaccurate and it keeps missing. Although it does still at least work with the camera. And also the autofocus motor, well, 
Oh, it sounds a bit like an asthmatic dinosaur in the mating season. It's just browning and whirring away there like, like a team of oh, Daleks in pain. So I'm gonna attract maybe a little bit of attention if I try and shoot a wedding with a lens like this. Gah, I'm so glad I don't have to review lenses with autofocus motors like that anymore. Okay, well, the most important thing most people will be asking is, what about image quality? How does that compare? Well, this little EOS R50 only has a 24 megapixel little APS-C sensor, so it might not be the best camera in the world for low light photography, but it's still capturing quite a lot of detail, enough even for wedding shooting, I think. And the best thing, of course, is that with the lovely L glass, the pictures are looking lovely and sharp, even when you're shooting straight from F2. In fact, the pictures look gorgeous. The image quality is looking wonderful. That the same can't quite be said for the Tamron lens with my EOS R5. Now this might have a 45 megapixel sensor, so a full frame, so it's got loads of detail and it works really well in darker conditions. But if you've got a soft lens in front of it, like this 28 year old monstrosity, then you're not really gonna be able to do that much unless you stop the aperture down all the way down to f8 or so and then you might get some sharpness but it's actually quite sharp in the middle but the corner image quality isn't all that isn't all that good in my experience it's yeah looking a bit dark and there's also loads of vignetting in the corners here especially at f3.5 the corners are looking so dark and that's not going to be a problem if you're using a crop sensor camera like the r50 and a full frame lens you're not going to get dark corners at all, even if you're not using in-camera corrections. And in my experience, the bokeh, the quality of a lens's bokeh looks a little bit nicer on APS-C if you're using a full-frame camera, because you don't get those weird cat's eye shapes to specular highlights in the image corners. So actually, there could be surprising benefits to using an APS-C camera, but with a decent lens. The biggest advantage of an expensive full frame camera is shooting in low light and at high ISO levels, well normally. Here you can see that my expensive EOS R5 camera's image is producing a bit less noise at very high ISO levels, a little less graininess. But despite its lower 24 megapixel resolution, the low budget EOS R50 camera seems to be capturing almost as much detail, almost. That's because the cheap Tamron lens from 1995 on a more expensive camera really isn't very sharp compared to the expensive L lens. Admittedly, one nice advantage of the expensive EOS R5 camera is its fabulous 8K video capability, perfect for TikTok and other social media videos. Okay, the 4K video quality of the cheaper EOS R50 camera is more than enough for virtually everyone in the world, but there's no denying, as you can see here, that with a lens attached that's sharp enough, 8K video can be cropped into beautifully, giving you some nice editing options for more professional video work. And despite this smaller camera having only an APS-C sensor, well, the bright aperture of this lens means I'm getting much more out of focus backgrounds. The pictures just look way, way better, having a decent piece of glass on top of them in all kinds of different ways. I love the out of focus backgrounds that a full frame camera can offer, but at the end of the day, if you have a lens with a lovely bright aperture, less expensive APS-C cameras can offer beautifully out of focus backgrounds too. It really is all about the lens here, which is why I love reviewing them so much. At the end of the day, having a fancy full frame mirrorless camera which cost an absolute fortune well, that can be useful for certain photographers who need 8K video or 45 megapixel images, but I think it's much better. I think everyone knows this, don't they? It's much better to invest in a good piece of glass to put in front of it. Even a 24 megapixel APS-C camera will get great results if you're getting beautiful images from a sharp lens with a bright aperture.